So we do have our SDK, which can help to bring your on-premise data in real time to almost any target cloud relational databases. Like, it's very important now to go for some demo and so that you can visualize what is happening. And based on that, maybe we can try to uh, learn this particular architecture. Okay. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is uh, Hari Kishore. I'm a part of Arini. So we are specialized in uh, SAP uh, BTP uh, on the domains of extensions, integration, and analytics. And I have uh, Partha Goswami along with me, uh, who's our enterprise technology architect, also working on the uh, we should switch, yeah, probably. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> BTP space uh, well, for a long time, even from the days of uh, SAP NEO, uh, which we are not allowed to uh, mention uh, anymore. Um, today's topic is going to be on a smart data integration, as we all know, on the BTP space. If we look into integration, so we have three or maybe two uh, domains, process integration and data integration. There's a third one, which is the thing, integration, which we can uh, discuss later. So on the, on the two main topics of process integration, there is a solution probably discussed in other sessions, which is the SAP integration suite, which is positioned as the North Star or uh, the, the go-to solution for any A to A, B to B, or B to G uh, interactions within, within your landscape. Uh, but when it comes to data integration, unfortunately, there are multiple choices depending on the pattern, uh, depending on the, uh, the data medium, as well as uh, frequency uh, and the target systems. Uh, so we just wanted to, to brainstorm on what are the possibilities and focus on one such capability, which is called smart data integration, uh, which is an, a very powerful tool, exists within the HANA uh, database. It existed even before BTP or even in the cloud. So your on-premise HANA database already had this functionality called smart data integration or smart data access, SDA, SDI, uh, which enabled uh, federation of your ERP or any of your business application data into the HANA database. And when, uh, when sub HANA cloud was launched, this capability was migrated or brought in also as a data federation or integration tool focused on federating your on-premise SAP data to the cloud with sub HANA cloud as the target persistence layer. Uh, and there we, we explored and we have been using multiple tools uh, and we also explored, it doesn't have to be SAP to SAP. We could also position the SDI capabilities uh, to non-SAP target as well, uh, like the AWS data lake, uh, where we have colleagues from AWS here, or the Azure data lake or any other relational database management systems uh, you have in your application. Why do we have to do that? That's probably Partha will, will further explain in some of the use cases. That's it. Hello, good afternoon all. My name is Parth and to allow me like, I wanted to know how many of you already dealing with the data in your organization, especially if you just raise your hand. Yeah. We yeah. do have a lot of other SAP's solution which can also help you to integrate or to have the data flow from one system to another system, maybe like BODS or maybe CIDS or even the new tool, the data intelligence, right? So why we are talking about this smart data integration here? Of course, there are different pros and cons. So here we are trying to highlight, okay, so where you can see light green to deep green. So you can see like most of the things we can see here in the smart data integration in the deep green, right, be it engine, okay? So, and in this particular HANA engine, we do have that part, right? So, DP server, there actually the magic happens, there actually the operations within the smart data integration happens there, okay? So, just to uh, bring a broader picture. Now, we are going into the DP server where the smart data integration operations are happening. So, this is the normal operation, like uh, your on-premise systems generally, behind your firewall, be it S4HANA, ECC system, and we do have different different adapters. We are having this data provisioning agent uh, provided by SAP itself. And then you install it and bring the data in your HANA cloud, uh, just to highlight. Now, the interesting part. So as uh, Hari was mentioning at the initial slide, right? So SDI is a very powerful tool to bring the data or communicate data within 
the SAP ecosystem. So within the SAP ecosystem, that particular keywords was strike through, right? So that's where we are moving now. And that's where this particular picture is, like if you are running your on-premise system on top of Sybase, HANA, DB2, Oracle, whatever the backend database is. So we do have our SDK, which can help to bring your on-premise data in real time to almost any target cloud relational databases. Okay? So when we are saying uh, the cloud, target cloud databases, we are not ignoring BTP as well. So in BTP also, you can push it either this HANA cloud or also within the BTP, you can push the data in real time in Postgres. Now imagine, right? So when you are building application, side-by-side -side application or extension application, be it like BTP, AWS, Azure, or wherever it is, let's imagine it is in BTP, you were doing the extension application on top of HANA Cloud. And uh, the experience we have, so customers were paying a lot to maintain HANA Cloud. Now imagine that if you, if you can build your application, let's say CAP application, Cloud application programming model based application that is also possible now in Postgre based database, right? So, if I just give a rough example calculation, if you are spending 5,000 euros in HANA Cloud, you can get the similar things in maybe like 200, 300 euros in Postgres. So don't take it like an accurate number, but yeah, just to give some kind of high level overview. Now, how the things happening here, okay? So main mechanism, it's not something like we are deviating from SAP's technology, and also it's not SAP's technology. So every database is having their own CDC, change data capture mechanism, right? Be it Oracle, DB2, HANA, Sybase, every database have their change data capture mechanism. So our particularly SDK is also on top of this change data capture. And what we have done there is we are also using this change data capture and we are bringing the data as a stage layer in BTP. And also we are using intermediately HANA Cloud because that's the way SAP is supporting smart data integration, SDI. So we are not deviating from SAP's rule. And also we are saying we can push the data to your target databases, be it in BTP or other cloud, as you have seen earlier, which can, which can open up a lot of opportunities for you, and also it can reduce a lot of cost for you. And what we have done as part of this SDK, that is, uh, of course, like as I was mentioning, we have used the Smart Data Integration DP agent, but we have dockerized it based on your requirement. It's not something like you have to fine tune every time for your uh, data volume and all. So we do have different categories, like three, four categories, and you can just parameterize those categories and you can docker in your own system, okay? That is one thing. And another thing, we do have multiple microservices here that we have built to actually federate, then push the information, push the data real time from our stage layer to your target DB. So this is the simplest approach. Now, before going to this uh, uh, architecture, I, I think like, it's very important now to uh, go for some demo and so that you can visualize what is happening. And based on that, maybe we can try to uh, learn this particular architecture, okay? But uh, as of now, you can imagine, so our component is wherever you have seen, you are seeing here the orange color icons, be it like container, be it like this pentagon type icons, which is nothing but microservices. So those are our custom solution, okay, microservices. And the data flows, the orange data flows is happening based on our custom microservices and SDK. So we'll come back here once again. But before that, let's uh, move into the demo. Um, in that way, it can be more interactive. So this is the prerequisite, first of all, to uh, go for this demo. Like, you do have your backend system. Then you do have your target DB, of course, like uh, your source and target you do have. Now, our pre-configured Docker, where we do have the data provisioning agent. 
So here you can see the CDC mechanism and now here in our interface you can give the source table and target table, source is our SAP table, target is our Postgre table. You can do the start setup, the metadata information already flowed, whatever the table you have mentioned there. This is the Postgre table for your target system and these are the metadata information already came with all the field, all the field characteristics is, is, is available within a click and then here you can see as of now there is no data because we just synced the metadata and after that we have to actually perform some of the uh, steps as per our SDK rules. Here you can see our uh, Postgre functions and some of the other steps we have and then when you perform all these steps as per our SDK then you go and uh, um, see that your data start flowing from your backend system to Postgre. Here you can see we do have the data now in our Postgre database. This is the target. And you can see as of now we do have 153 count for VBAK, sales order headed table. Now let's go to the backend system and create a new sales order here. It should now ideally as per our logic, as per our SDK, it should automatically flow to the target system that is the Postgre table. So the, the sales order is getting saved here. This is the sales order number. Now you can see the number got changed in the target DB and now just to verify the particular sales order got processed to our target DB. So this is the query that we are executing and voila. So we do have our sales order in our target post grade. Okay, so I would like to give a pause before going to the uh, architecture part. Yeah, you wanted to? Oh. Yeah. Yes. Um, not, not much because uh, we are allowed to use Safana Cloud. When we, when we subscribe for Safana Cloud, we are allowed to use uh, SDI as the data federation layer. So that gives us the, uh, uh, the, the, the license or, or the, the responsibility to, to, to federate data into uh, uh, to any third party applications. All the components which are listed here, like the microservices is also on the BTP cap layer, which means it's very similar to any of your sidecar application development uh, or using an, uh, uh, for example, a Power BI on top of Safana Cloud. Uh, so we're not deviating much from the, uh, from the SAP strategy and it, it's already being used in one of our, our partner as well for a SaaS uh, application uh, where we, we validated it and it's not triggering the indirect license usage. Also, also not on the source side from the runtime No, because uh, DP agent has the capability to, uh, to, to connect with uh, any of your source databases. Because the persistence layer is still Safana Cloud. Yeah. The, the data is still persisted in the Safana Cloud. What we have done is implemented the lifecycle management of the data. As soon as the data is federated to your target landscape, then the data is going to be pushed down to the, the warm or the cold layer of the HANA Cloud. So this data is still there, it's just not consuming the hot memory, which is the expensive part of, uh, of HANA Cloud. So we have, we have also implemented the, the automatic lifecycle management that as soon as uh, data is federated, uh, using the, the procedures that we push it down to the, the disk layer, which is a warm, or uh, if you have huge volumes, uh, then we can also push it to the data lake layer of HANA Cloud. Yeah. And interestingly, we have done, as uh, he was mentioning, so we have done for both Sideways and HANA Cloud, HANA as a backend database. And we pushed it to, as of now, sorry, that as of now we are pushing it to GCP. So if uh, there will be chances, then of course, like there will be possibilities to AWS as well. 